but when east-west tensions were at their height, the U.S. was also pressing its subs into service. Just two years after K-19 averted nuclear catastrophe, the USS Thresher went down off New England. Even today, it remains the deadliest submarine disaster in history. In 1963, Thresher was the most modern sub in the U.S. Navy. She was designed to be the deepest diving, fastest submarine in the world. Also, the, uh, the quietest. Ray McCool was reactor control officer on the Thresher. Thresher was a solid, excellent war machine. The Navy was counting on that to uh, try to stay one step ahead of the Russians. But trouble dogged the boat, from a collision to battery problems. Her initial attempt to submerge to a test depth resulted only in twisting her hull, and she never could get down to test depth. The ship had so many problems. A hell of a lot of work to do. April 1963. Thresher has been in dock for nine months, undergoing a complete overhaul. Now she is finally ready to begin her trials. We didn't get out very far, and we found the main seawater suction valve would not go shut. We turned around and went back in, and there was a radio message waiting for me that my wife was in the hospital. McCool stays behind to care for her, and Thresher heads back to sea without him. miles off Cape Cod, she plans to descend to her maximum depth, 1,300 feet. Down there, more than 40 tons of water pressure bear down on every square foot of the hull. To begin with, all goes smoothly. Until suddenly, the rescue ship Skylark waiting above Thresher gets a cryptic message. Have positive up angle. I'm attempting to blow. No one is sure what this means, but on Thresher, the problem is far from minor. As the sub nears test depth, it seems a pipe joint fails. The ocean is now trying to come in. The water is coming in at such a velocity that it atomizes. It basically turns into mist. Well, that mist now can permeate the compartment much more than just a straight shot of water. and apparently shorted out one of their major buses. And when that happens, the submarine's nuclear reactor scrams, which means it shuts down. Thresher is now without power and in terrible danger. They're losing buoyancy, and they're starting to slip down. And they didn't have to slip far. Deep in the ocean, they are on the very margin of life and death. At 9.18 in the morning, the magnificent thresher loses its fight with the sea, slips below its crushed depth, and implodes, crushed like a tin can, then ripped apart by the unimaginable power of the ocean. It's very humane in the sense that you are killed instantly. Uh, and the submarine was just shredded like a giant, giant bomb. A bomb that you can't even imagine the power of that just took that submarine and shredded it. And that's it. And then it just, down it goes. But the game's over. It's beginning to sink in. Uh, still difficult to believe. Uh, I couldn't believe that the ship could be down. It was just not possible. I, I don't believe there's any way to describe uh, your feelings when uh, you lose a, a close shipmates. Every year they have a thresher memorial and they have a sounding of the gong and they name uh, each name. I don't go to them anymore.
the Navy sent its most sophisticated deep-sea submersible to search for the wreckage. They recovered one piece of mangled pipe. A mile and a half down in the blackness, Thresher had been reduced to little more than scrap metal, the final resting place for 129 men.